Hi, I'm Scott, and this is the Old School Pixel Party, where we talk about everything to do with retro gaming. Hi there, retro gamers. Now, today we're going to do something a little bit different. I am going to tell you a story. We're going to talk about the first ever Super Nintendo that I owned. See, growing up, we were a Sega household. First console was a Master System, Mega Drive followed on after that, we had a Dreamcast, so... I'm really a Sega fanboy at heart. I mean, if you had a playground debate about which was better, Sega or Nintendo, you would find me on the Sega side of the fence. That doesn't mean that I don't like Nintendo or that I haven't played any Super Nintendo. I've played quite a lot of it. Borrowed consoles, I've used emulators, I've used Virtual Console, but I've never actually owned a Super Nintendo until very, very recently. Now, like most good stories, this one starts on eBay. I was casually browsing for Super Nintendos like you do, and then I saw it. Just a console on its own. No leads, no power pack, no controllers, untested, but for a very good price. So I wondered and I went back and forth because it was a risk, it was a gamble. Do I buy it? Do I leave it? If I don't buy it, it'll be gone forever. If I do buy it and it doesn't work, it's just an expensive paperweight. Fuck it! I bought it. Not long after that, I bought a power pack, I bought some controllers and I bought a TV lead. Now, I bought these all at the same time. They all said first class delivery, so you'd think they would arrive at the same time. Did they fuck? First to arrive was the power pack, so hooked it all up, switched on the Super Nintendo, and yes, the red light came on, so power works. That's a good sign, that's a good start. However, that wasn't very entertaining to watch, so I went to bed. Next day, on my lunch break from work, I got all excited, ran all the way to my local independent game shop, not the one I used to go to that's closed down, but another one, to see what kind of Super Nintendo games they had for me. But all they had was this, Olympic Summer Games 96. Well, you, you take what you can get, so I bought that. When I got home, the TV leads had arrived, so hooked it all up to the TV, hooked it all up to the Super Nintendo, put in Olympic Summer Games 96, switched it on, and joy of joys, it worked! And I couldn't play it, so I just watched it for longer than you would assume, but that got boring after a while, so I, I just went to bed. The next day, the controllers finally arrived, so plugged them in, hooked everything up, put in Olympic Summer Games 96, and it worked. I could play through the entire thing, no problem at all. Except for the fact that Olympic Summer Games 96 is a terrible boring, abysmal game. The only way I can enjoy this game is to set up the long jump, start tapping to make my athlete run along, and then narrate out loud the athlete's thoughts. You know, how much training he's done, how he's dreamed of this, how he's hoped he'd get here, how he's got the hopes and dreams of a country resting on his shoulders, and then just let him fall over. And I find that funny, because I am a horrible bastard. However, that also got boring after a while, so I just went to bed. The next day, I did what anyone in my position would do, and that is steal games from my little brother. I stole Starwing, I stole Street Fighter 2, and I stole Super Mario World, and oh, bliss. I mean, I always liked Super Mario World, but I never really appreciated it until I got to spend a good, solid amount of time playing it, and oh, it's a masterpiece. And that, I feel, is a happy ending to the story of my first ever Super Nintendo. Now, I want you to tell me what was your first ever console? Was it Sega? Was it Nintendo? Was it an Atari 2600? Did your parents get you a Panasonic 3DO because they were bastards and they hated you? Let me know in the comments below. My favourite comment from the last vlog goes to Lord Leto, or Lord Leto, I don't really know how to pronounce your name mate, sorry. He was talking about the Afterburner R360 cabinet which you sit in and a gyroscope type thing just flings you about all over the shop, it's fucking mental. Also, he used the phrase fucking mental in his comment and well, fucking mental is just an amazing phrase to use when you've got a Scottish accent and you've given me an excuse to say fucking mental about four or five times now in this vlog, which in itself is fucking mental. So thank you very, very much. This is why you're my favourite comment of the week. While we're here, if you find yourself in Geek and Sundry vlogs, check out Mitch Hutz. He does cocktails with booze in them and sometimes not booze in them, but mostly booze in them. And they've got game references and geek references, but they also have booze in them, so you should totally take them up on those. I'll be back in two weeks, unless Geek and Sundry fire me for constantly saying fucking mental all the time. But if I'm not fired, I'll see you all in two weeks, and as always, good work, retro gamers! I'll most likely kill you in the morning. And that would be fucking mental. <laughs>